the uncrowned king of political hip-hop. He's into underground hip-hop. He's been described by Oprah as a visionary filmmaker and somebody with a powerful message. It is not death most people are afraid of. It is getting to the end of life only to realize that you never truly lived. There was a study done, a hospital study, on 100 elderly people facing death close to their last breath. They were asked to reflect about their life's biggest regret. Nearly all of them said they regretted not the things they did, but the things they didn't do, the risks they never took, the dreams they didn't pursue. I ask you, will your last words be, if only I hit, hey, you, wake up, why do you exist? When I interviewed Gangaji and Eli, who are coming to New Zealand at the end of January and through February, and asked them what message they had for Prince EA, who has been somebody with whom they have worked, there was one word they both gave me, and that was love. Give him our love. He is somebody whose statement on his Facebook page says, I want to teach every heart on the planet. I want to show that at our core, we are love, we are free, and we are one. Welcome, Prince EA. <laughs> it's lovely to talk to you. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I love that introduction. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. You're, 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 you're a spoken word poet. You're a filmmaker. You're, you're really not able to be defined, but your work is beautiful, and it's, be, it's reached more than 50 million people. How does, before we talk about your links with Ganga Jean Eli, how does that feel for one man to have that reach? How do you keep it real as you do? No, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's great. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to do it, um, to, to, to be able to have a, a platform that I can do it. Um, it's funny because I remember uh, I had a conversation with Gangaji maybe uh, two years ago. You know about it, so I was, but I was coming from the perspective. I was like, okay, so I got, I got all these views, millions of views, but how do I really know? I was like, guys, how do I really know that I'm that I'm impacting people? That I'm really, do and she said, you can't, you know, you, you can't, you you got to let go of the 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 result, the desire for a certain result, and and that was such just needed wisdom and you know even in the Tao Te Ching it says the uh, the path to serenity is to let go of the desire let go of the result uh, just to, to, to create the action in and of itself for itself um, and so that's that's why I do it and I'm, I'm happy that I that I can can continue to to do it but it can be an ego trap too you know when you get so many views you're like okay why isn't this video getting as many views oh no what, what did I do but that, again, is a trap. So we continue, we must remember to do it for and of itself. Almost as if you are a, a, a pen in the hand of, of something bigger, of, of the greater writer, whatever that force is. Yeah, a vehicle. I, you know, I always say, I was going to say, I, I never uh, really take credit for any idea that, or any concept that that comes, you know, because the concept wasn't, didn't originate with me. It came to this and happened through this. Uh, so how can I take credit? Oh, I did that. I made that. No, I didn't make the, <laughs> you know, I've never had a single idea. You know, the ideas come when in the, through the silence. So how can you take credit? There is no anything to take credit for or by or with. I love that idea, Prince EA. Any, any artist, true artist that in my experience I've talked to has that understanding somewhere in their, in their psyche that it's being done through them. How did you come to Gangaji and Eli? Because it would be wonderful if through you many other young people, you're only 29, if many other young Kiwis felt inspired to connect. We have a very high suicide problem in New Zealand at the moment. And I think there are many young Kiwis who would benefit from talking to Gangaji and Eli. So tell us your story. 
of connecting? Yeah, so uh, I connected through, uh, first, through uh, Muji. So watching Muji's videos, um, and then for Muji, I discovered Papaji. Um, and from Papaji, uh, Gangaji, and Eli, like, I, it was just down, kind of down this rabbit hole of, of inquiry. Um but it was it was it was in the digital world, and then I just bought as many books uh, as I could from from Papaji, and then I got you know a couple of Gagaji's books, and I think what actually, um, yeah, the story of what happened was I had posted a picture of um, I think the truth is uh, Papaji's book, and someone from the new Gangaji saw it, and then I got an email from a lovely woman named Barbara, and then uh, she was like, Gangaji wanted to meet me, or if I was ever uh, here in, I think they were in, like, California at the time. I was in California, and then I happened to be in California, so we met up, and <laughs> that's, the, that's the story. We met up on a, on a beach, actually, um, and we just sat and... Uh, so lovely, so lovely. Can you take us to that moment? Because in a way, for someone thinking, who are all these names? Muji's a Jamaican guy, and Papaji was this beautiful Indian guy. All of that can go. I mean, it's important and it's not important. What matters is what happened on that beach for you. What dropped in for you, Prince EA? Yeah, no, I mean, the, the entire uh, quest was just a for me to ask the question, who am I? Um, um, actually, I made a few, actually made a few videos um, that also went, went viral, and I think they, Gangaji and Barbara might have saw those as well. Um, but it was just this search for what is it, who am I? Um, am I just this, this, this body, and this name, this form, this mind? Um, and you know, these things happen. Things, uh, I mean, the story is just a story. Things kind of happen on their own volition. And somehow I wound up uh, on a beach with, with Kanji looking at the sunset. Uh, <laughs> and it was, and, and you know, the thing is, you know, sometimes we, we create this, uh, I think we have this tendency to create this image of, of spiritual people, you know, they're supposed to be a certain way and look, you know, uh, but, you know, when you meet Gangaji, it's just shattered, right? You, you realize that we, this projection is, is another trap, another illusion. And you realize how human uh, uh, they really are, right? <laughs> um, and that was, that was a beautiful realization for me. Um, to, 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 to really just abandon these images of what I think a, a spiritual teacher is. There are some beautiful videos that you've done online. The one, everybody dies, but not everybody lives, has this call for all of us saying, wake up, hey you, wake up. Why do you exist? There's something you, you put right down the camera at all of us. But it's a question for everybody to answer in our lives. How how do you answer that question? Why do you exist? Yeah. How do I answer that question? I, mean, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 to kind of dance in this mystery of 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 love. Um, Existence is is really enough. Sometimes, see, there's a there's a very um, uh, fragile uh, balance between. Um, so sometimes we can have this idea of a purpose, right? I'm here to I'm here to do that. I'm here to change that. I'm here to, and that comes, you know, that idea was put inside of you for a reason, and I think uh, a very beautiful reason, and we should explore those, those reasons, but also 
there is a um, a level where existence is enough um, and whatever purpose that comes from the heart and not from the mind, uh, we have to surrender to. So right now, it seems as though what I'm doing is creating content for masses and creating films that touch and reach so many people, but I also have to be um, authentic and vulnerable enough for if a diff if a call inside of me if it, if that phone rings I have to be able to answer it and and be able to shift and detach myself from okay from this uh, purpose to to something else and just flow with the the beautiful of life. It's such a beautiful answer. It's like following a mermaid with the most perfect silver tail and the minute you try to grasp at her, grasp at something, it's no longer full of that mystery and that magic. If you can, if you cannot try and own it, it owns you. You put it well in that same video. You say Martin Luther King didn't have a dream at all. What do you say about Martin Luther King? You, you turn it on its head, Prince EA. Right, right, that, that said that dream had him. No, I don't know much, but I know this. Every person on this earth has a gift. And I apologize to the black community, but I can no longer pretend. Martin Luther King, that man never had a dream. That dream had him. See, people don't choose dreams. Dreams choose them. So the question I'm getting to is, do you have the courage to grab the dream that picked you? As, as we kind of just talked about, we don't create any ideas. Ideas come to us, and whatever gift or thought or invention or revolutionary technology comes to you, uh, we have to have the courage to answer that call. And uh, you know, Martin Luther King had the courage to answer that call. Some people, they don't, they don't answer the call. They, which is why I also said a lot of people, uh, the, the, the wealthiest, richest place on earth is, is the graveyard because it's full of ideas uh, never never realized, books never written, uh, songs never sung. But at the same time, it's all perfect. Uh, you know, it's all, it's all perfect. It's this delicate balance of the world is perfect as it is, and so is my desire to want to heal it or want to uh, share my gift with it. So it's a paradox to be comfortable in. Freedom, yeah. That much freedom, the, what, paradox. You, what, what you describe is freedom. is freedom, but that much freedom can be really scary for humans. Do you have a lot of people saying, how, how do you live without the certainties, without the boundaries, without the, the very clear lines that many people want, it, just to trade off freedom for a sense of illusory safety? And, and then often, as we're, we're dying, I think people go, oh, it wasn't about the safe, the safe zones. It was about something else. How do you live in the unsafe zone all the time with, with this much freedom around you? When you say unsafe, do you mean as far as uh, career and, and um, or what, do you, what do you mean unsafe? Unsafe in this world? Unsafe in... It's a really good question. It's unsafe for the human ego. The egoic part of us wants a defined world. And the paradox is it seems as if the soul part, part of us wants freedom just to express. So these two parts of a human being almost contradict each other. Do you feel that sometimes? Yeah, you know, I, I think that there's a lot. It is, it is a, contra a contradiction. And the, a big contradiction also is um, sometimes the most control comes when you realize nothing is controllable. At that, you know, to be comfortable and uncomfortableness, you know, it's 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 uh, that. I mean, that this is wisdom. Um, but you're right; the ego pops up and it wants it, it wants it its way, and. Um, but it's just about being mindful and, and observing it, and um, not not and and yeah, I think just just being true to that uh, that silent expression, and also for me, 
you know, I always say the biggest teacher of, of how to live is, is, is death, right? The, the Buddha himself, he said, don't think, don't think. But if you must think, let it be of the uncertainty of your death. Uh, the fact that we don't know if we have 50 years, five years, five days, five, five minutes to live from now is a very uncertain uh, and can be uncomfortable feeling. But if you really come to that and see the um, the offering that it can give you, it gives you a life of, of freedom, of joy, of presence, of love, of peace. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how that coming always coming back to to death is a great a hack, I think, to to live fully and to live uh, beyond ego. <laughs> when I asked you before about fearlessness, going to the unsafe zones fearlessly, which I see in your videos, one of your latest ones is uh, let's stop judging terrorists. And I just loved it. For, for someone from America, we, there's been such an indoctrination that there's the other and they're terrorists, and they're worth fearing, and therefore we must all band together. You totally break that down in that video. Tell us what, what message you really wanted to, to get across there. It's, it's talk about a hack. It's really brave. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. You, you were, uh, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't because we, we just have such a, such a knee-jerk reactionary uh, reaction to anything that, it involves terrorism. It's, it's like, how can anybody do, you know, create such harm and damage to innocent people? You know, so it's like we want to hate them. I love terrorists. Now, before you go and send this to President Trump to have me arrested, just wait until the end of the video. I said, wait until the end of the damn video. What is so hard to understand about that? This is not condoning, this is not approving, this is understanding, this is love. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow puts it brilliantly. If we could read the secret history of our enemies, we would find in them enough sorrow and suffering to disarm all of our hostility. I can't be the first one who has figured this out. Terrorism is not the problem. That is a lie that has been carried out for far too long. There are no terrorists. There are people who do terrorist acts. There's a difference. When you call someone a terrorist, you become psychologically incapable of seeing the person anymore. Meaning, you no longer see the causes that created this effect. And now you only see an abstraction. And when you declare war on an abstraction, you fight a ghost and it never ends. But when you, when you number one, when you realize that hating, um, hatred never ceases with more hatred, but by love alone is healed. Uh, when you begin to build up the hatred inside of you, what you have effectively done is added more hatred to the world and if we don't want to see terrorism which I don't think anybody wants to see then we have to take on the individual responsibility of filling ourselves with love and understanding to create more of understanding in the world not hatred because the hatred that is created in you that, that energy shifts to the people around you and you are consciously you're trying to you hate um, terrorism you just made it grow even more. <laughs> um, have you, is it, is it possible to really have the courage to ask the question, is it possible for you to, to do it, to carry out a terrorist act? Is it possible? I think it's possible for anybody if they are under a certain ideology, uh, if they are imprisoned by a certain belief, uh, belief system, uh, and we just kind of have to step back and realize what created this individual to do a terrorist act. We should hate the terrorist act. We shouldn't hate the terrorist because a terrorist doesn't exist. When you call somebody a terrorist, you, you, you dehumanize them. You, 
They are no longer a human being with an upbringing, with a, a background, with causes. They are just this thing, this 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 entity, this evil entity uh, of a terrorist. And when you when you frame it that way, you leave no more space for uh, for love and dialogue and peace. It's so beautiful what you say in that video, and 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 liken it to a tree that's put under pressure, and and maybe there's something. Uh, a, a fence or something that's blocking its growth. And so that tree grows in a distorted way through the fence, around, trying to make its way up to the light. This is not a soft option you're offering. You're offering something that helps the terrorist and the person who would judge the terrorist to grow. Both, of, both parties benefit from, from this coming back to love. But just, just the way you frame it in that video, where does that come from, Prince EA? Is it the middle of the night you wake up and you think, that's what I'm going to do. This is what I need to say. This is, this is coming through me now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where it comes from. It comes from nowhere and it goes back where it came from. Uh, it it kind of just, it, it just happens. I, I think the, these, these topics that everybody is so certain about, we have to question them. We have to question our assumptions about them. Um, Especially something as big as uh, you know, terrorism, racism, all of these different um, topics that we can be so um, rigid in our thinking because we've had this, this, you know, our grandparents had these ideas, our parents had these ideas, so we're going to have these. You know, but we have to, if we want to become free beings, then we have to analyze every single thought that has ever come to our consciousness. Is it true? I love Byron Katie because she, she, she uh, has this, this, this the, uh, process called the work. And um, when, you, when a stressful thought comes, you know, it, uh, is it true? You ask yourself, is it true? Uh, you know, and then you, you, you turn it around and you, you, you say, uh, um, so you have a stressful thought. So say a stressful thought was uh, terrorists are uh, destroying the world, right? And then you say, is it is it true? Um, are terrorists? Yeah, it seems like they're true. And then you say, is it a hundred percent true? Well, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe they're. Maybe they're providing a ground for us to uh, build from. They're, they're opening the the die, the conversation, and 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 a lot of times it is through tragedy that we that we grow uh, as a species. Evolutionarily, usually it's we're, we're, we're put into these um, uh, the, under these forces, whether it be environmental or whatever. These forces are what help us to grow to another level of consciousness. So when you ask yourself these questions, these questions, is it true? When you question the thought, you realize the problem is not with the world itself. It's with our thinking about the world. And once we change our thinking about the world, the world itself will change. It's beautiful. And, and that whole idea of being against something. So let's march against terrorism. I remember the, the, the one quotation from Mother Teresa that's never left me when it was the 60s and it was the Vietnam War and they asked her to march, she said, I will never march against war, but when you have a march for peace, call me. It's, it's how we frame it, as you say, isn't it? There you go. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Big. I love that quote. I love that quote. What do you think young Kiwis particularly, I mean, you're 29 years old, you, you're obviously widely read, you're, you're deeply interested in why you're here and what life's about. What do you think Gangaji and Eli would offer Kiwis younger than you, Prince A, if they go along at the end of January and in February 2018, just to sit in a room with these two good souls who are, who are offering something? I always say you don't you don't have to wait until you're 90 in a rocking chair to find out what this world is all about, you know. And if you're called at 17, 29, 35, whatever, if you're called, it's a blessing, and we have to answer that call. And I think Gangaji and Eli um, they offer such a, a a beautiful and obvious truth. And that truth can 
change everything. Um, it, it, it's the, uh, the the short path, right? <laughs> There's a long path where it involves you, you know, it ends, ends with you being 90 and maybe obtaining this. And then there's the short path where you come to this moment right now and you find out what's, what is this about, what is real. And um, Elon Gangaji, they, uh, they have a very, very direct method and a beautiful method of bringing yourself to this present moment and finding out what's true. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're a millennial, and you get the opportunity to 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 sit with with these um, beautiful masters, then I, I think you should definitely take it. Oh, you're so beautiful! Are you going to come to New Zealand and see us and perform here? I'm coming. I'm coming. I don't know when, but I'm coming. Of course, on one hundred percent. I'm definitely coming. Yeah. What was your calling, Prince EA? What what your twenty nine? As I've said. Growing up in St. Louis, in, in St. Louis, in Missouri, when was your calling? When was your wake-up call? Or was it, was it just always with you like this? Well, you know, for me, it was a story of, de- of deep depression, right? It was, it was um, you know, I started out as a hip-hop artist, and I wanted to be the best rapper that ever lived. Uh, and I was on the path to that. I was performing in front of tens of thousands of people. I was working with Grammy Award winning artists. I was in the studio every night trying to be the best. And I was miserable, right? I kept comparing myself to other artists that were doing better than me, better than me. Uh, why is he on MTV and BET and I'm not? I'm better, I'm more skilled, more talented than them. That's not fair. So it came to a point where this comparing mind was so powerful and I wasn't where I wanted to be in my career. I just stopped and wanted to be happy. So I just ceased everything. And I knew that, um, I kind of intuitively knew that the, the, in order for me to know what's going to make me happy, I had to know who I, who I am. Who am I? And so I read everything. I read every, uh, you know, the, the ancient texts, the Upanishads, the Gitas, uh, the Tao Te Ching, uh, the modern sages as well, Eckhart Tolle's, the the Kades, the the the, the Gangajis, the Muji, you know. So I, I read it all, and, and I, what I realized was that uh, happiness is not out there; it's it's in here. Um, and when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Um, you are you are perfect as you are. Uh, everything else is is mental noise. Just illusions, um, and this this truth also the truth of that that love and compassion were the answer to every problem that we face, not only in the world at large, but also in our own selves, at a micro scale. So uh, after this, um, this is kind of this is kind of what happened. This realization it was me constantly asking myself, who am I? Who who am I? Who who am I? Um, and I don't know if I'm, uh, you know, woken up. I, I, I don't know these these names, these enlightened. I think a lot of those are traps as well. I'm, I'm just here and doing the best that I can, and uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the best that you can is is a beautiful best, and uh, we haven't even canvassed your messages about the environment, about ideas for schooling. They're all online. Could you just give us the details for people who want to go into your page and want to sign up? It's wonderful, enriching stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you. Uh, my page is just princeea.com. Uh, a lot of videos on you. If you're, if you're a YouTuber, then just follow my YouTube page. If you're on Facebook more, then I got a Facebook page. And uh, and on the website is just princea.com. So that's where you can find all of my all of my, uh, my my thoughts and ideas. And let me know what you think. <laughs> well, I can. I, I love following you. I really look forward to the posts, and I have loved talking to you. Thank you so much. And please come and see us. Come to New Zealand. I will. We're we're gonna talk. Let's talk. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this this interview. So. So did I. Thank you. Thank you for watching this. And a warm thanks to Prince Ian.